the potential will be same and also the charge across these two capacitors will be same. Now why that happens, I had drawn an alternate diagram for this one and that was something like this. circuit it is as I said as I had said in the last class I can shift this capacitor C2 to this side or to this side unless until there is an other component is coming or other branch is coming I don't need to worry about where I am to put that capacitor C2 I can put it here I can put it here I can even put it just before this terminal where we are getting this joint so it, it can be shifted anywhere that was one thing then one more alternative way of drawing the same diagram is I can put it like this also so that you will be able to understand in a much better way this is my C1 this is my C2 C3 and this is my battery of 6 volt. Now if you observe the diagram, it appears to be arranged in a different way but is the same circuit. Just for your understanding, I will just give the names. Let's call this as point A, point B, C, D, E and F. So I've got six points and the same six points you can observe in this diagram also. So this is my point A. Point B remains as it is. Now the point C, because I have shifted this capacitor here, instead of calling this as point C, I am going to call this point as C and at the same time you can call that point as D also. Because there is no element in present in between these two points, so I don't have to bother whether I am labeling that C here or somewhere in the middle or somewhere in the bottom. So this C2. Between the points B and C, I should get that capacitor C2. So is it coming? Yes, this is point B and I am labeling this as point C. So between points B and C, I am getting that capacitor C2. So this way it is correct. Then D doesn't matter because there is nothing in between C and D and also there is nothing in between D and E. So, so I can, I, you can even drop that D letter D because I already have labeled that end as C. Then coming to this point, it remains as it is, this is my point E and at the end, the point F remains in its position. So this was one way of redrawing that diagram. Then another diagram which I have drawn here, point A is here and at the end, point F will be here. Both the points are going to be same. Now after A, what I have between point A and B, I should get this capacitance C1. So I cannot label this point as point B, instead I will label this point as B. Because what I have in this circuit diagram is between points A and B, I should get that value of C1. So this is A, this is B and in this in between, I am going to get the value of that C1. Now after B and if I see this diagram, these two capacitors, this is one capacitor that is C3 and this is the second capacitor, these two capacitors are appearing only between two points that is between point B and point E. Even the C and D does not matter now. What I have is from B to E I have got C3 and from B to E again I have got C2. So I can label directly this point as point E. So what I need there, this is my point B. The connection is getting split up here. One path goes to C3, the other path goes to C2. So I have got two paths. Then coming down, this will meet at point E, this is also coming back to meet at point E. So this is going to complete my circuit. And from E to F, there is a direct connection. So I can draw this diagram either in this way or in this way. Both ways, it is going to give us the same solution. That is one thing. Then another thing, this is 6 volt of battery and they have, I have got two capacitors, that is C1. Okay. I will just put the value, this is 10 microfarad, this is 5 microfarad, this is also 5 microfarad and these two are in parallel, so C2 is parallel to C3, that means I can directly add them, they are going to become 
10 microfarad. Now, what this 10 microfarad means is this is 5, this is 5, they are going to add up and it is going to become 10. So I can replace this complete setup. I'll just extend the diagram here. This is my C1 and this is going to be my CP. What is CP? CP is the addition of C2 C and C3 and that I have got here. So what is my potential here? It is 6 volt and what are my capacitance? C1 is equal to 10 microfarad and CP is also equal to 10 microfarad. So I have got two capacitances which are of same value. When the capacitances are of same value, they will divide the potential equally. So these two potentials across the C1 and CP will be same. And we know that since the capacitance value and potential value, the capacitance value and the potential value, they are same. Q, the charge that will be stored in this setup and in this setup will be same. So the charge on C1 will be equal to C1V. Now what will be the division of V? Total voltage is, total potential is 6 volt. It is divided equally between these two. So this is going to become 3 volt. This is going to become 3 volt. This is only applicable if I have got same values on both the sides. If I have different values, then this potential, division of the potential will be in different, will be having different values. So let us say this one as V1 and this one as V2 or I can call it as Vp just for consistency purpose. So what is C1? It is 10 into 10 to the power of minus 6 into 3 that is going to give me result of 30 into 10 to the power of minus 6 coulomb. So that was about Q1. What about Qp? The charge on this capacitor which is a combination of these two. So what it will be? Again it will be Cp, Vp. So what is my Cp? Parallel capacitance is again 10 into 10 to the power of minus 6. What is the value of Cp? It is, sorry, Vp, it is again 3 volt. That is going to give me again 30 into 10 to the power of minus 6 coulomb. So that I got the charge. Now, when the, what, how they are arranged? They are arranged in parallel format. C2 and C3 are in parallel. So whatever the charge is present on this Cp, it has to be divided based on the values of C2 and C3. What is the value of C2? It is 5. What is the value of C3? That is also 5. If the values of capacitances are equal, the potential across these two is same. That means the potential, sorry, the charge will also be divided in equal phase, equal ways. So, if I want Q2, if I want Q3, it is going to be, this is going to be Qp divided by 2, and this is also going to be Qp divided by 2. So, this is going to become 15 into 10 to the power of minus 6 coulomb, and 15 into 10 to the power of minus 6 coulomb. So, charge across these two will be same and the potential on the upper part of the circuit and the potential in the lower part of the circuit, the potential will be same on both sides. Only when the values of capacitances and the potentials are same, the charge is going to take the same value. If there is a variation, then even the charge value varies, even the potential value changes.